there is one of the biggest challenges that President Tuto is contending with is the Uhuru Ally Intelligent Personnel. For those who have followed this channel, you remember, I once told you that the Vice Chairman of the Jubilee Party, Mr. David Murade, once gave a free advice to the Ruto administration. And David Murade explained that the former president Uhuru Kenyatta has been in power for a period of 10 good years. During that period, he was the commander-in-chief of all the armed forces. He was res responsible for the appointments and promotion of all the armed forces, the police and the military, that is the Air Force, the Kenya Navy and the Kenya Army. And Muradi advised William Ruto that in, a, in case or in the event that he ascended to power to the most coveted office in State House, let him not attempt to investigate or to arrest Uhuru Kenyatta. Because in his very considered opinion, Murade noted that if William Ruto attempts to arrest Uhuru Kenyatta, this is going to create a coup. Because he said that the forces that are still loyal to Uhuru Kenyatta are still entrenched in the Kenyan forces. And the network is so much entrenched that only four or, or, or six months is not enough to disentangle that network that is still loyal to President Uhuru Kenyatta. The same thing is happening with Fredo Kenyu Matiani. As the immediate former Interior Cabinet Secretary, you all understand that he was responsible directly to the affairs in the police sector. Fredo Kenyu Matiani was so powerful that at one point, he's the man who was responsible for trickling down or reducing the number of security personnel in the deputy president's office. And it goes without saying that his network within the police is still entrenched that no one can attempt to mess up with Fred Matiani. Why am I giving you this story, ladies and gentlemen? The saga and the drama that happened in the middle of the night yesterday was as a result of the Uhuru and Macheni loyal forces within the police. I'm Freda Chando. Kindly support our channel, click the notification bell, and like our videos. There is one question that many are still asking. Yesterday, when the media was reporting what was happening in the current home of uh, Mr. Fred Matiani, we saw Raila talking and we watched the lead lawyer Dunstan Omari defending his client. But if there are faces that were never conspicuous in that drama were the policemen that went, the over 200 elite squad of the GSU that surrounded the home of Fredo King Martin. And this has given the government the excuse of denying any involvement in any attempt to ransack, to arrest, or to intimidate Fred Okeng Wachani. In fact, today when the Langata wing of the police went to the home of Fred Matiani, it is reported that they put Fred to task to give them a CCTV footage showing those who came to interfere with him in the dead of the night. The debate in the street now is going on and depending on which political divide you are in, people have taken sides. There are those who are saying that this was choreographed and that there were no policemen around Fred Okengo Matiani's home. Yet there are those who believe that there was a lot of political machination and the policemen went there were it not for the quick response of the Azimio Brigade then we will be speaking another language. But details are now tricking down 
gradually and we are gaining flesh of what exactly happened yesterday. There are loyal forces within the police that had the report that Fred Macheni was going to be arrested or that his house was going to be invaded. And so when the plan was ripe and everything had been copied on board and they were discharged, someone leaked this information to the former CS and they told him that we are coming so be prepared. The government up to now does not know who leaked this information because by the time these people attempted to arrive at the home already Raila Molodinga was there, journalists were there, lawyers were there, a number of uh, Azimio supporters were there and they could not gain entry. This forced a number of them to retreat even without being seen. The very few who arrived there looked at the crowd that had gone there to keep vigil and they could not do anything. And this is the reason why I'm telling you that if there is one big challenge that William Ruto will have to contend with is the fact there are still loyal forces. You know, there are two kinds of loyalty in the forces. There is one that is called constitutional loyalty. The constitutional loyalty is very simple. If you are allied to Azimio, let's say for example, you are a brother to Raila Muludinga, who has said that he does not recognize the legitimacy of President Ruto. And you are the chief of defense forces. Maybe you are, you are Robert Kibochi. The constitution and the oath of office mandates you and compels you that you will salute to President Uhuru Kenyatta, of President William Samuel Ruto, as long as he has taken oath of office and he has got that sword. Deep down your heart, you could really be loyal to Raila, but the constitutional mandate requires you that you salute to William Samuel Ruto. If you are a very loyal supporter of William Samuel Ruto or of Raila Munodinga, then your child comes to you that an exam has been set and now they are being asked who is the president of Kenya. You will definitely tell them that the president is William Samuel Ruto, yet deep down your heart, you feel that William Ruto is not the president. This is what is happening. There are those forces who by constitution they salute and they do everything that the law requires. So the problem or the challenge comes when you now discharge them to go and harass an Azimio supporter yet they are they, they, they swear their political allegiance to the Azimio fraternity. So when you discharge them, or when they are in charge of the people who, are, who want to execute the plans to harass any of the Azimio uh, uh, Azimi royalists, Azimio supporter, or Azimio leaders, they will first call them and inform them that we are there, we are coming there. And if they have another commander who will be in charge, and they know that someone will be watching as they execute those duties, they will alert you so that you either run away, you either take cover, or hide. And this is the reason why it was not very easy to harass Fredo King Matiani. And news with this era of social media and internet, news spreads faster than fire in a desert. And this is the reason why immediately this information leaked out, the, the Mr. Dennis Onyang, who's the director of communications in the office of the former Prime Minister Raila Odinga, managed to send this information to citizen and to all the other newsrooms. And immediately it was hell breaking loose. It is not going to be very difficult moving forward. William Mutu will have to take his time to rearrange and restructure the security. This I can tell you for free. Because you will see more of this happening. When they are about to do something, any kind of mischief to their political opponents, Immediately it will reach them and they will be reacting very fast. So ladies and gentlemen, yesterday, whatever happened yesterday, took the intervention of the Uhuru loyal forces who leaked out this information before it escalated.
to some unmanageable situations. And I think it is good news to all the uh, Azimio supporters, but it is bad news to the Kenya Kwanza team. One thing I must reiterate here is that we need a peaceful country where business can thrive. We need peace because we are all brothers and sisters. We only have one country. We don't have anywhere to go. It is upon President William Samuel Ruto to choose the path of reconciliation rather than the path of vengeance because vengeance will take us nowhere. William Ruto must create a difference between himself and what he criticized as uh, the ills that were being per perpetuated in the previous regime. The last thing, I take it very seriously that President William Samuel Ruto and the Deputy Rigathi Shagwa have always manifested themselves as Christians. Kindly, can we see the real fruits of Christianity? I would love to see Christianity in action. I call upon the President and the Deputy President to practice what they preach. I don't know what to think, but that is my take.